Hi friends! Today we're going to read You're Only Old Once, a book for obsolete children by Dr. Seuss. One day you will read in the National Geographic of a faraway land with no smelly bad traffic. In those green pastured mountains of Fata Fazi, everybody feels fine at 103, because the air that they breathe is potassium free, and because they chew nuts from the tut tut tree. This gives strength to their teeth, it gives length to their hair, and they live without doctors with nary a care. And you'll find yourself wishing that you were out there in Fata Fazi, and not here in this chair in the Golden Years Clinic on Century Square for spleen readjustment and muffler repair. Just why are you here? You're not feeling your best. You've come in for an eyesight and solvency test. Oh, look at what he's reading. And if you're the type that gets finicky finick, at this point you'll try to get out of that clinic, but they will outwit you as quick as a winnick. The quiz docs will catch you. They'll start questionnaireing. They'll ask you point blank how your parts are all faring. And your grandfather's parts. And please try to recall if your grandmother grandma hurt most in the spring or the fall. Did your cousins have dreadful wild nightmares at night? Did they suffer such ailments as bus driver's blight? Chimney sweep stupor or prune picker's plight? And describe the main cause of your uncle's collapse. Too much alphabet soup or martinis, perhaps? And the next thing you know, when you've finished that test, is somehow you've lost both your necktie and vest. And an ogler is ogling your stomach and chest. Your escape plans have melted. You haven't a chance. For the next thing you know, both your socks and your pants and your drawers and your shoes have been lost for the day. The oglers have blossomed like roses in May. And silently, grimly, they ogle away. What those oglers have learned, they're not ready to tell. Clinicians don't spout their opinions pell-mell. So you're back with the vestibule fish for a spell. Nor Norval won't bring you much comfort, you know, but he's quite sympathetic as clinic fish go. Fish feels bad for him. There you'll sit several hours, growing tenser each second, fearing your fate will be worse than you reckoned, till finally Miss Becker, your beckoner, beckons. To a booth where the world-renowned ear man, Von Crandall, has perfected a test known as Bellows and Candle. If the wind from the bellows can't blow out the flame, you failed and you're going to be sorry you came. <laughs> You'll be told that your hearing's so murky and muddy, your case calls for special intensified study. They'll test you with noises from far and from near and you'll get a black mark for the ones you can't hear. Then they'll say, my dear fellow, you're deafer than most, but there's hope, since you're not quite as deaf as a post. We'll study your symptoms, we'll give you a call. In the meantime, go back and sit down in the hall. So you'll find yourself talking to Norval once more, and Norval will think you're a bit of a bore because Norval has heard the same stories before. To this fish, you'll become a plain pain in the neck while you wait, once again, for Miss Becker to beck. But Miss Becker won't come. With great swish and great swank, a wheelchair will come. You've gained status and rank, and Weldon the Wheeler will say with great pride, you have qualified, sir. You are now certified. As a VIP case, you're entitled to ride. 
through thin and through thick, I'll be at your backside. Dear Weldon, we'll show you great sights as you go. Right now, you are riding down Stethoscope Row. And I know that, like all our top patients, you're hoping to get yourself stethed with some fine first-class scoping. So I'm sure you'll be simply delighted to hear that in the Internal Organs Olympics last year, Dr. Schmidt, Smoot, Sinatra, Sylvester, and Fonz won 15 gold medals, 9 silver, 6 bronze. For the most, for the moment, however, we'll bypass this bunch. There's plenty of time to see them after lunch. You must see Dr. Pollen, our allergy whiz, who knows every sniffle and itch that there is. Dr. Pollen will find, as he works on your case, if the face powder's wrong on your stepsister's face, he will check your reactions to thumbtacks and glue, catcher's mitts, leaf molds, and cardigan too. Nasturtiums and marble cake, white and blue chalks, anthracite coal, and the feathers of hawks, also corn on the cob, also buffalo grease, and how you react when you're stared at by geese. He'll take copious notes, then I'll hazard a guess that he'll send you downstairs to see Dr. Van Ness. Van Ness has enjoyed a high rate of success in his pioneer work in the study of stress, so you can be sure he will stress you a trifle. Then he'll send you around to see Dr. Von Eiffel. That does look stressful. Dietitian Von Eiffel controls the Wuff Whiffer, our diet-devising computerized sniffer on which you just simply lie down and repose, and sniff at good food as it goes past your nose. From caviar souffle to caribou roast, from chemican, pemmican pa patties to terrapin toast, he'll find out by sniff scan the foods you like most. And when that guy finds out what you like, you can bet it won't be on your diet. From here on, forget it. Then, into the new wing, we'll see Dr. Spreckles, who does the three Fs, footsies, fungus, and freckles. And next, we'll drop in on Dr. Gins, our A&S man, who does antrums and shins. And of course, he'll refer us to Drs. McGrew, McGuire, and McPherson, and Blinn and Ballou, and Timpkins and Tompkins, and Diller and Drew, Fitzsimmons, Fitzgerald, and Fitzpatrick, too, all of whom will prescribe a prescription for you. There's a lot of doctors. For your pill drill, you'll go to room 663, where a voice will instruct you. Repeat after me. This small white pill is what I munch at breakfast and right after lunch. I take the pill that's Kelly Green before each meal and in between. These Loganberry colored pills I take for early morning chills. I take the pill with zebra stripes to cure my early evening gripes. These orange-tinted ones, of course, I take to cure my Charlie horse. I take three blues at half past eight to slow my exhalation rate. On alternate nights at 9 p.m., I swallow pinkies, four of them. The reds, which make my eyebrows strong, I eat like popcorn all day long. The speckled browns are what I keep beside my bed to help me sleep. This long, flat one is what I take if I should die before I wake. When at last we are sure you've been properly pilled, then a few paper forms must be properly filled, so that you and your heirs may be properly billed. Whereupon, if you're smart, there's a very good chance that you'll meet soon again with your socks, coat, and pants.
And you'll know, once your neck ties back under your chin, and Norval has waved you godspeed with his fin, you're in pretty good shape for the shape you are in. The end.